All right, guys, thank you guys for joining me. We are going to be in Galatians chapter 3 today, guys. So, hope everybody is having a blessed and wonderful day out there. Been pretty nice here. Went out and did some mowing in the yard earlier. Mowed my yard, mowed the lady next door's yard. Got her animals all took care of and stuff for the day. Anyways, it's enough about me. Let's do some praying. Father God, I want to come before you today. I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for my life, for my salvation, Lord. I want to thank you for the, for the renewing that I feel in me and my life. I, you're so amazing, God. Help us to never lose our childlike all when it comes to you, Lord, and what you do for us. I ask, Lord, that you bless this video, Lord, that anybody watching it at any time is able to see something in it, hear something from it, Lord, that just fires them up for you, Lord, makes them want to do something for you. Um, I want to thank you for continuing to guide me, continuing to protect me and my family, Lord, continuing to preserve our health, Lord. I can feel your hand over us, Lord, every single day. I ask, Lord, that you... <clears throat> Make us more bold as Christians, Lord. Make us seek you out more, remember you more. Give us your heart. Give us your eyes, Lord. Give us a brain and a mind like yours, Lord. Allow us to wake up every day renewed, refreshed, rejuvenated, and just continue to dedicate ourselves to you more and more fully, Lord. In your heavenly name I pray. Guys, he's so good. I know that might have been a little bit long-winded, but I just, I feel really thankful. He's really amazing, and, you know, you guys are a big part of that. I feel really thankful that I get to share with you guys. You know, it might not be a great big crowd, but it doesn't matter because I know that the people that watch these really do like them, and I love getting to make them, and maybe just one person watches it just one time, and it makes them come to the foot of the cross, man. That is so worth it. Or if one believer who's having a bad day just remembers how lucky we all are because of something that God gets me to say here. Hey, that's amazing. Anyways, that's enough. Let's get into this. Galatians 3. <clears throat> oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith, yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men, though it is only a man's covenant. Yet, if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it now. To Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. And this I say, that the law, which has 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ, 
that he should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator does not mediate for one only, but God is one. Is the law then against the promise of God? Certainly not. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. But the scripture has confined all under sin, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Therefore the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen, guys. Thank you guys for letting me share with you. It really does mean the world to me. Sorry, guys. I started to get a ringing in my ear midway through re reading. I got high blood pressure, and I get that sometimes, and it's driving me crazy right now. Anyways, so the first thing I want to talk about is, I don't know about your Bible, but most Bibles, when you're into Galatians 3, most of them will have a little heading there, and it would appear that most say something about justification by faith. And so I wanted to take a minute, because that's a central part of this chapter, I wanted to take a minute to talk about exactly what that means, justification by faith. What's this mean? What's entailed here? Well, in short, in the biblical context, this word justification is a verb describing the action or process by which a person is drawn into an unmerited yet totally right relationship with Father God. To be clear, though, in no way does this process of justification contain the entirety of the salvation process. But what it does do is it marks the exact time and place that we are transformed. It serves as a sort of mile marker for the exact moment we got right with our Creator. As Christians, we are one of the Abrahamic faiths. But our ties to Abraham don't justify us. However, the object of faith that we share with Abraham does. Our faith alone in Christ alone can draw us in to our Heavenly Father's fold. 3-1, guys. O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? Foolishness truly is humanity's most persistent trait and thorn. We shouldn't confuse foolish with either ignorant or stupid. And honestly, to do so is to underestimate the impact that the foolish can have. To be foolish does not mean someone has inadequate intelligence. No, to be foolish, more correctly, is stating that they lack wisdom. Foolishness is a choice. Foolish is living by the rules and the ways of this world as opposed to living according to the word of God. That's foolish, and that's dangerous. 3-2 This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? I talk about this often, and here we get a chance to see what I mean when I say that as Christians, we have to walk in the fact that we serve the God of the victory. The victory is ours, guys. The Galatians had already received the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the number one proof a believer is saved. He is each of our guarantee of eternal glory. The very moment in which we believe in Christ as our Savior, the Spirit of God indwells us. 
This is why Christ said that everyone coming after him was more lucky. Or everyone coming after Christ was more lucky than, say, John the Baptist was. Because we're indwelt by the Spirit and all that that entails. This is instantaneous, it's not over time, and it's certainly not due to obedience or anything else like that. Sadly, for any believer who does not think that they are home to the Spirit, if they think that the Holy Spirit does not indwell them, then, sadly enough, they are either being deeply misled or misinformed, or even worse, they're possibly not saved. Three, five, and six, guys. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Being Abraham's seed was a real point of pride for the Judaizers. And knowing this, Paul asked, how was Abraham justified? If you want to know more about that, check out Genesis 15, 5, and 6, because what it tells us is that Abraham was counted as righteous when he believed Father God's promise to give him as many descendants as there are stars. Our faith in Christ joins us to him, and in this we get to share in his righteousness. By our belief in God, we are justified, and in that moment of justification, we are gifted with the Holy Spirit of God. And now, being indwelt by God's Spirit, we are no longer our own. Remember, our walk of faith, our Christian life, guys, it is a supernatural life. It is a life capable of playing host to God's Spirit. It is a life capable of showcasing the supernatural power of God, guys. Our lives can do so much because of Christ working in us, guys. I know that for a fact. I know anyone who knew me before when I was lost, so lost. Anyone who sees me now, they get a chance to really see what it is that God can do in someone's life. He's so amazing, guys. 313. <clears throat> Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Think about that, guys. He, became, he, he took on a curse for us. All of humanity has violated the law, and so fittingly, they deserve the law's curse. And being cursed, obviously, we deserve God's condemnation. But due to his intense love for us, Christ bore that curse. He shouldered that load. He took... Our lashes, guys, he took my lashes, and it gives us peace with God. It's beautiful. 317, guys. And this I say, that the law, which has 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. The law was temporary. In effect, from Moses to Christ, God's intent and purpose with the law was never to void God's vow to Abraham, but rather to make our need for a Savior unmistakable. Only at our efforts in do we see clearly our need for a Savior. 318, guys. For if the inheritance is of the law... It is no longer of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. The Abrahamic covenant was established prior to the law, and so the inheritance is tied to the promise to Abraham and is not contingent upon the law given to Moses. 322, guys. But the scripture has confined all under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. We are not made sinners by the law. It just makes our sinful nature obvious to us. The law was never purposed by Father God to defeat sin. That was Christ's work. The law was put in place so we could define sin, so we could acknowledge sin. So we could see our need for a Savior, seek a Savior, 
find a savior, be saved, and repent. The law is that straight-edged ruler that makes clear how crooked everything else is. The law is white carpet, and it highlights our dirtiness. It highlights our staining nature. 328, last one I'm going to share with you. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Guys, this is a message that I really don't have anything to say on that. I really just wanted to end it on that because that's what we need to hear right now in this country, guys. Please join the team that they're talking about, guys, because we have equal rights and we have eternal benefits, y'all. Amen. Man, if you're not subscribed, smash the subscribe button. I drop a new video like this six days a week. And you know you want a little more Jesus in your life. And hey, even if you don't, if you can put up with me, I promise Jesus wants to talk to you a little bit more. Um, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you want to share it, my heart goes out to you. Um, any prayer requests, any comments, put those down here into the comment section, man. Come together. Build a community for Jesus, guys. He does amazing things. I'm here because of it. Just know this, though. I love you guys. God loves you so much more than I ever could, man. But I'll see y'all tomorrow.